my friends. Today is floss tube number, whatever number is right here on the screen. And uh, it's been two weeks. I'm going to uh, apologize up front right now if my energy is a little bit lower today. I, for some reason, am just, well, I think I know some of the reasons, but I am very tired. My mind is really struggling the last few days and hopefully I've written down enough stuff that I won't forget what it is that I'm supposed to be talking about and showing you and everything. If I did my prep work well enough, this video is going to go just fine. But welcome everybody. I'm Suki, the Brown Eyed Stitcher. You can find me under the Brown Eyed Stitcher on Instagram. I post there multiple times a day as my poor followers know. <laughs> I, I love you all. You put up with my multiple posts every single day. Whew, that's okay. And I post here on FlossTube. I actually, well, I post every two weeks a, a regular FlossTube video, and then on the weeks that I don't do a FlossTube, I try and do a Stitch With Me on those, on those weeks. Though I may try to do a Stitch With Me every week, starting, like, in two weeks from now. Or three weeks. We'll see. More on that. More on that later. Oh my goodness, this... Mm, my brain. Okay. I'm going to start by showing you my whips. And, um, and then, like, I'm just going to make my way through my stacks that are around me. And we're going to see what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I hope it makes sense. I am so sorry if it doesn't make sense today. So I'm first going to show you my daily piece. I work on this every single day and unless I am on a trip away from home. This is Treasure Hunt Bookshelf. Um, oh, picture. First piece and I'm already not doing it. Treasure Hunt Bookshelf, super size, max color. Artwork by Amy Stewart, charted by Heaven and Earth Design. This piece, um, the first shelf I worked most of the first shelf, extreme cross country. So I did one color at a time throughout the whole shelf for most of the, for most of that top shelf. At one point I just wanted to see it all filled in and so I just filled it the rest of the way in. but. By that point, I feel like I was, I feel like I was, had to have been like maybe 23% done with the piece. Anyway, this next shelf I've been working like little scene by scene. So like a book would be a scene. This girl was the scene. And I will show it to you. Ta-da! As usual, I have no idea where this any of my pieces were two weeks ago, but I probably was working on her. Um, I was probably halfway through this girl. And then I came and did this book, which says Foxfire. And then now, now I'm working on um, this book which must have something in front of it because there's a lot of shadow coming in here. There she is. Um, there we go. I put in 7,705 stitches over the last two weeks for a... Uh, there, uh, it's bringing me to 
7%. So I, I get about 1% done every two weeks, more or less, on Treasure Hunt Bookshop. My It is my daily piece. I have a daily goal of 500 st um, stitches a day with a yearly goal of one shelf per year. So she will be finished in at the end of 2024. I do show this setup in, I think, floss tube number five. Uh, I should remember these things better, or remember to look them up, but I do show the setup for and talk about the scroll frame at rod and how I work on that because I get a lot of I get a lot of questions about a super size piece. That is 28 count easy count fabric, uh, two over one tenth stitch. This next piece I worked on was Neuschwanstein Castle. Artwork by Robert Finale. This piece, I bought it off Etsy, and in the description, I'll link the shop in the description box below. If it's not listed, you may have to message the shop owner, and they'll set it up for you where you can purchase this one. It has 60 colors in it, and I really love it. The pages are tiny. I didn't realize how tiny the pages are. This I'm stitching on 25 count Lugana. Oops. It's 25 count Lugana, two over one, tent stitch. And that's what it looks like. That little itty bitty start. I mean, I said little itty bitty. It's really not a little itty bitty start anymore. There's I stitched 1,516 stitches since you last saw it, and it's now at 1.2%. And that outlines a page from here to down here. So these pages are really tiny compared to a Heaven and Earth design, which would be probably twice the width. But it's so fun to see this come together. I did, however, discover that I did not have every single DMC color because my uh, craft store, my local craft store, it's, a, it's just a big box craft store, um, only had up to a certain number in the DMC collection. Um, my box is over there. I'm not going to reach it. It, But you know, it has the rows and rows of the DMC and everything's labeled and you get to the end of it and you're like, I got it all. Except I didn't have it all. There were five colors higher than, I think I had 3866, up to 3866. And, and that was the end of the display in the store. Turns out that's not all the colors. There's five additional colors that I could not find in the store. I didn't find them on any of the surrounding display area. So I had to make an order from one, two, three stitch to get the additional colors. One of one or two of which was in Neuschwanstein Castle, which is how I discovered this. So I'm going to show you that later, but of course that meant that I couldn't just order a few skeins of floss, so I ordered some other stuff too. What are you going to do, right? If you have to pay shipping, you might as well pay shipping on more stuff. My next project I worked on is Temperature Library. This is charted by Christy... D. Clement, Clement, Clementi. It's an E, not an I. I'm not sure. Uh, she, her Etsy shop is Christie's Corner Needlework. Christie's Corner Needle is 
if you search. Anyway, it's down here. It's going to be linked below. This is her second uh, charted one. The first one was for 2021. And I was behind when I picked it up, and I'm still behind now. But that's okay. I still have not managed to count this, so I don't know if it's 16 or 18 count, but it is Oatmeal Ada. That much I know. And my color palette is all jewel tones, and this is February. I'm almost to the end of February. My birthday is like two more books over here. And you can see the kind of weather I've had. A whole bunch of like getting warm and then plummeting into cold again. And it does the same thing over here, and it does it all throughout March as well. We just have been going between like 30 and 70 degrees all year long. So now it's almost the end of March. Well, it'll basically be the end of March by the time you see this. And I'm so I'm a whole month behind. Oops. Next up. Uh, I worked on Queen of the Night. This is artwork by Josephine Wall, charted by Heaven and Earth Design. And this is my smallest Heaven and Earth um, chart pattern. Whip. All of the above. I did discover that this one uses Krennic, which I did have on hand. That's so, it's just white and it's shiny and I'm not prepared to show little shiny things. But I did have a uh, Krynek on hand. So I was able to use it. What is this? This is on 25 count. So I make these um, note cards for each of my projects and it tells me all the information about a project, including every floss tube video that I'm showing in, I I write down like my stitch count and stuff like that. So this is the only reason I remember to tell you information. This is 25 easy count, two over one, 10 stitch. It is, ta-da, see it's small. And I finished page two. There is, the Krennic is in here, but I know that people have the hardest time showing it. You can see maybe a little sparkle in through here. Cameras don't pick it up very easily. And then I came down here and was working on, I don't know, the third page. This page, I don't know what page number it actually is. One, two... It looks like maybe it's five pages across, so maybe page six. I don't know. But I came down here. It's all cloudage. Lots of pinks. And I did a stitch with me on this piece last week. It ended up being a two-hour long stitch with me, and I am shocked, y'all. How many people stayed with me that whole two hours or close to the whole two hours when I was live, but then also have watched the replay? Like, you guys listen to me chat about the most random stuff. I feel like it was the most random, but honestly, you mostly talked about candy and food. I don't know. It just felt like I never planned what I'm going to say. I never plan what I'm going to say on these on these lives or these floss tubes. I just don't. And so I never know what's going to come up, but I kind of just leave it open to whoever is is there. And so I'll start saying something about what is going on in my brain. And then people start giving comments and we go off on tangents. And that's how we started talking about candy for a really long time. I don't, I don't know, but 
we made it through two hours and it was so fun. It was, it was so fun. Anyway, this piece, Queen of the Night, I stitched um, 5,666 stitches on this over the last two weeks for a total of, well, it's almost 21,000 stitches now in this whole thing at 13.61%, which is just mind boggling to me how fast the little pieces stitch up. I'm too used to a super sized treasure hunt bookshelf. Like everything, everything gets sized against a super size, which isn't very fair. So everything else is like, oh, this is going so fast. It's still a significant amount of stitches though. All full coverage are. <sighs> okay, I think I told you everything about that piece. Just need to bring these up here. Okay, the next was a new start. One which I was really looking forward to, and then um, just absolutely fell in love with as I was stitching and I can't I can't really tell you why um, except nature is very special to me and I connect with it a lot and so this is what the chart is the summer garden by the drawn thread and it's got a house they have one for every season and then they have some other gardens, like the butterfly garden. And I basically want to stitch them all. But you have the house, and then you've got all of these different flowers. Um, there are some bees and birds in here too. But um, it's a mixture of cross stitch and specialty stitches. There was something about starting this that as soon as I started, I got the first stitches in, I I just, I could feel a lot of tension leave my body. Um, my mind found some peace that I had been needing. And, whew, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll show you these, I guess. And it was just really good. I didn't want to, Put it down. I worked on it for I think nine days in a row. Sorry, I'm pulling out everything here. It is on 32 count Belfast linen. I I'm using everything called for. 32 count Belfast linen. Here's the whole piece, but this is basically the top of the pattern, and then there's some back stitch letters down here. So that's essentially the height of the whole piece. I got the house mostly finished. I'm missing this, the window color in the door and this window. Um, I haven't stitched it yet, I mean. I have the color, I just haven't stitched it. And then all of these empty spaces here, that's, that's flower colors that I haven't, I haven't done yet. I've only done the white that is right in here because I was stitching with white. Oops. This is the called for flosses are needlepoint silks, which is so soft. And where's the other one? Dinky dyes are the other. And I haven't worked with the dinky dies yet. Um, and there is one, it says silk and colors is what that says. I guess I could put it over here on the back there. So I haven't worked with that. I've only worked with the needlepoint silk so far. And when you buy the kit through their website, the Drawn Threads website, this is how they come. They come pre-cut in these really short lengths, which is perfect for working with silk. Yeah, I keep stroking them because they're so soft. <laughs> it's, it's so lovely. Um, 
but it comes it comes with that all ready for you. I just I just love this so much. I put in 2,141 stitches. I have no idea how many stitches are in the entire piece. I just know how many I did. Um, I have a very particular way things go in my <laughs> in my bags, so I'm trying to put them back. Oh, and I stitched this in hand, and I think that also is one of the things that I really loved about it. I just, I rolled it from the bottom um, because it was easy, just like that, and then I was stitching like this. I'm left-handed. And this is linen, and it's over two. You stitch it uh, one over two. So it's really easy to do the sewing method, which is where your hand stays up on the top of the fabric the whole time, and your needle just dips in and out, and you pull it through. Uh, there were a few cases where the stitches didn't lay right doing that, but for the most part, it's, it was perfect. And I really enjoyed that like slow stitch feeling that I ended up trying it on Queen of the Night. The Q-snap it was on was starting to like loosen and bother me. So I I just took it off and I tried doing stitching that in hand and I really liked it as well. That one is a lot harder to you I can't do that the sewing method. I have to move my hand above and below, right? We're all stitches here, you know what I mean. Then I had another new start. This is a French title that I can't pronounce, but it means Circus of Tiles. And one thing that is really, really cool is all of these tiles are different. None of them are the same. And I just think that's so neat. I am... Oh, I want to show you this. Isn't that gorgeous? This is the silk I'm using. It, it is just so pretty. I got half a hank of this. That's how much you get when it's a half hank. Can you imagine a full hank of this? That'd be super pretty. Okay, hold on. Let me tell you the information. So this is an ink circles chart. It means circus of tiles. Here we go. There are 16,590 stitches in it. I am stitching this on 32 count Belfast linen, which I have, this is I think my third one that is Belfast linen because Twisted Band Sampler is on a black Belfast linen. The Summer Garden is Summer Khaki Belfast linen. And this is Stormy Night. They all feel a little different too. So anyway, this piece is a little bigger than it, it'll actually be. I think it's more like that. But here's my start. Isn't that so pretty? I I just love it. So I tried two different methods um, before deciding on how I was going to stitch this. But what's really fun is that I just keep every every time I come to a tile, I can decide how I'm going to do it. Like in this one, I started in this top corner, I went around the outside, and then just kept going around. <laughs> that was fun. I think I did the same here. I started, I think I started in this top corner, and I went around, and then I went around, I kept going around. This one I really like, because there is stitches right in the middle that are 
different from the surrounding stitches. This one was fun because I, I went back and forth, and so you've got the more stripe effect. These little tchotchke things, those are like repeat. They just are different colors. And these ones as well. You see a lot of the those two different motifs. I guess these ones as well. That one and this one are the same. But the once you get to this size, they're always different in their charting. And then they're um, going to look additionally different because of the variegated floss. So this is a Silks For You floss. It is... Um, unwinding here. It is PR090 090. So if you go to their website, um, you can see all of their um, colors. And they're, they're listed as full hanks or I think they have like skein, like little skein collections, like the equivalent of a DMC skein. But you can get any of their colors in a half hank. You just have to email them and ask for which half hanks you want. And they will then send you a PayPal invoice. And after that, they pay you. They And they send you shipping, like tracking. They're in Australia. So... The shipping took just a little bit, and it was a little bit. Okay, so my camera just, well, my phone, like, just stopped recording and, like, deleted several minutes of what I just, like, several minutes. Like, two and a half projects worth of several minutes. So... I'm going to start where I'm pretty certain it cut off. And we'll see if this redo means that I get even more chatty or even less chatty. However, you're not going to know the difference because you won't have known what I just did. So that's what this is. PR090 or 090. PR090 and it is gorgeous and I love it. It it basically is a, a super super light purple here in this area and then you've got like your purple sections and your your tealy bluey section. It fades beautifully from color to color as you saw in my piece. I surely hope I gave all the other information about that pattern because I don't remember at this point. The last piece that I worked on, I I pulled this out because I just needed something different to work on. Um, and this is one of my oldest whips. Picture. This is Mystery Town by Ships Manor. It was a mystery stitch along in 2017. And what happened was that he released the background first. All the background was released. And you could stitch all of that. It was like, and then, and then each part, like part one, once those started release, you got two options for every release, what you wanted to stitch. So here I was, I was being a very good stitch along person. I've never, I had never done a stitch along before 2017. I didn't even like know they existed. And I signed up for two different stitch alongs. This one and one by um, Lakeside Needlecraft, the Under the, under the Sea, whatever their 2017 was, Under the Sea. Um, and this one by Ships Manor. This is where I'm at right now. Um, I'll tell you about that in a second. Whew. So I stitched all the background. He sent it out and I was like, this is so fun. I was working with variegated floss. Um, like, all of this is variegated. Well, not all of it. Um, like, this is just 310. But uh, this was 
one of my first times working with variegated floss. And I don't, it, I think I would do it differently if I were to do it again, but I, I do like what it is, so it's not like I want to redo it. Um, and I stitched all the background and I was like, all right, I'm ready. I can keep up with this. It's only six parts to fill in the buildings. Like, I can do that. But he offered choices. Like, the first section was a, um, right, right here at the barn. And these bee houses, bee, bee, what are bee houses called? Hives, bee hives. Um, but the other option was a church, and those would be gravestones for a cemetery. And all of a sudden, I didn't know what to stitch. I was like, I have to make choices, but I have to make choices based on not knowing what my other choices are, because every single part was going to be offered with options. So then I had to wait until the whole thing was released, and by that point, I was like, on to... Other. Anyway, I didn't pick this up again until... January, end of January 2022 so I didn't touch it once from in between those things but I picked it up last night and I stitched part two which was this storefront and the top part of this cart now the cart um, I saw some people made it into a car like they stitched they outlined it so that it looked like a car some people did just like red for apples. I did flowers. I don't, I don't think I can make it. Say, are we going to focus at all? No, no, okay. Nope, that's what you get. And then this storefront is charted to be pink. This picture actually is as charted. But... I didn't totally love the pink, so I asked my daughter to help pick out colors, and we went with purple, and uh, I think we changed nine out of the 11 colors that I used. The only colors we didn't change is the 310 and the 3799. It's called Lee's Pet Cafe, and these jars are pet treats. They, the top is a really pale pink, which I don't think is showing up on the camera very well. But you can see it in real life. She made this, uh, it's a very, very creamy yellow door color, and the steps are blue. She really wanted to go with the light colors on that. She's excited. The next part, oh, she kept saying, I feel so professional. I I make good color choices. That's a, she's really cute. Um, she's she did she did a she did a good job. And if you've seen her in my past, I think she's been in just one other video. Um, she is she's twelve and did did blah, 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 did a good job. Part two so or one two part three is a house that's up here and a house that is over here and in this picture they look like that and like that i don't remember which one what we picked out um because i did help my daughter helped me make those choices too and very likely we're going to change some colors because because that it was just really fun to do that. So that is Ship's Manor. Oh, the fabric on that. It is a 16 count um, hand dyed Ada by Ship's Manor. It's called Cloud Shapes. I don't know if you can still get it from Ship's Manor. Uh, because it was, if I remember correctly, it was for this stitch along. I don't know. I think it was my first time stitching on 16 count though. And I chose Ada because I wasn't familiar with other fabrics yet. 
at that time. I mean, you had to, I had to pick this in like 2016, right? When I was ordering for a 2017 stitch line. Yeah. So at that time, I really didn't know much outside of kit stuff, which is like all Ada, usually 14 count Ada. So this was part of my first, uh, there were several things right at that time that I was going off and exploring. I signed up for two stitch alongs. I um, had discovered Heaven and Earth design, which and Shadow Lane, which I'm about to talk about right now. So um, that was everything I worked on over the last two weeks. Was that six projects or seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven projects. It seems like six-ish projects is... Oh, sorry, my dog is moving things. <laughs> okay. Um, hold on. You're on. Sweet dog. There we go. Oh, yeah, I'm trying. Sorry. Okay. So because of Neuschwanstein Castle and my discovery of missing DMC colors, I ordered those colors that I that my local store wasn't didn't carry. Um, this purple one is the one I was missing for Neuschwanstein. But all of these colors are higher numbers than 3866. And there were five of them. So I got those colors from one to three stitch, but you know, when you're, when you have to pay shipping for that, um, I'm sorry, you're like all tilted now. Okay. Um, I figured since I was paying shipping for this, I was going to also get other things so that five little skeins didn't have to travel alone. So I got this really big piece of fabric this is what it looks like folded up but it's really thick this is a half a fat half i need to show you how big this is is that that's about yeah it's big and this is for a shadow lane i don't know how much of this fabric it won't take up all of it because this is a 27 by 36 and I believe I only need like a 25 square for this shadowing and that I think is including the margins. Don't ask me to remember. I did the math when I ordered this fabric and that's all I did um, or that's all I remember. So this is a 28 count antique cashew linen. I really like linen, guys. I really like linen. It's more expensive than even weave, or at least than Lugana. And I understand why, but it's just so beautiful to work with. Um, I love it. So, Chatelaine. The story behind Chatelaine. I really am feeling quite chatty today, especially because I, I think I lost close to 15 to 20 minutes of filming already. So this is all double. Anyway, Chatelaine. I discovered Chatelaine just after I discovered Heaven and Earth design. The first, the way I discovered Heaven and Earth design was I saw the treasure hunt bookshelf artwork somewhere, absolutely fell in love with it. And when I was searching about it, like the, who the designer was, how I could get this artwork, I discovered that it was also a cross or, dis, or charted as a cross stitch design by heaven and earth design and welcome Suki to the world of full coverage cross stitch because I didn't really know that that was a thing remember at this time this was in 2016 I really had only done kit stuff up to that point um on and off since my childhood so I hadn't really delved into like how many different designers there were, all the different like fabrics and 
threads and beautiful, beautiful, creative things that are, I was missing out, but no more. I discovered having an earth design and I needed to learn all about how you stitched this like stuff. Um, I very quickly knew that I we're going to say third time is the charm. I figured out the problem that my phone is having. What I don't understand is why my phone is having it. So I think I fixed it for now. Because I'm, I'm like, I'm losing it. I am losing it, everybody. Hi, puppy. Do you need something? You need to come here? Do you want to say hi? Come up here so you can say hi. Come here. Here she is. Can you face the camera? Can you face the camera? No? Okay. So, Heaven and Earth Design and Chatelaine's, I have now told the story twice already. So, um, well, and like, I cut it down the second time, so maybe I should cut it down the third time by just saying, I, I don't know what even to say at this point. <sighs> I found Heaven and Earth Design. And when I was researching Heaven and Earth Design, I had found and how to do these full coverage projects because now I really wanted to do Treasure and Hunt Bookshelf on a super size max color. I can you feel like my anxiety now coming through the camera, you guys? I I'm sorry. Thumbs up if you like to see more of a hot mess. When my brain is spastic and I have technology trouble. Okay, so as I was doing my research on heaven and earth design and full coverage pieces, I came across a, a YouTuber who I don't remember her name and be, because it's been like seven years now. And I think she had stopped making videos anyway by the time I had even found her. But she did a lot of heaven and earth design charts and then she I remember one of her last videos she had said because I watched so many of them she said that she was now like phasing out of heaven and earth design because she wanted to focus on her shadow lane designs which she had shown and I had seen and I also fell in love with them but um never tackled it until well, I still haven't tackled it, but now I have supplies with which to tackle it. So I showed you the fabric. And now, for the third time on my part, I am going to show you this pattern. This is Autumn Water Garden Mandala. Mandala? Mandala. Mandala. Okay, they both sound weird. Anyway, and now my lighting from my window is also kind of weird. So there are, there's just the water garden, but then I think there's all four seasons of the water garden. Mandala. mandala. Um, there's also a knot garden and four seasons of the knot garden, and I want to do all ten. I'm starting with this one simply for the reason that when I was trying to choose which one to start with, this one was on sale. So, I did that. And it uses all kinds of threads. It uses DMC, but also, um, like, thread, thread Gatherer and Gloriana's and Dinky Dyes. I don't remember if there's another one. But then it also uses beads and um, you probably can't see them but right there oh you can these are cubes and these are uh, crystals um, I've shown these before and now I have now I have fabric I I want to start this soon um, 
I don't have all of the, I don't have the specialty threads, but I do have DMC, obviously. So I'm, I can start with that, hopefully. I hope the first, the middle section has DMC in it. I've not even looked. And I'm going to start this on a stitch with me because in the past when I've commented or when I've brought up shadow, the shadow lane, uh, whatever, um, I've received comments and messages about uh, other people also being intimidated by um, tackling something like a shadow lane. They are big, and there's specialty stitches, and the and there's beadings, and there's different threads, and there's all these things. But uh, I just, I believe that anything that's big can be broken down into something smaller. So I'm going to take those first steps, and you can watch me. You can just watch me take those those first little baby steps um, where I just find a stitch and I'm just going to, like, that's what I'm going to do. Just like with Mayari, um, my first fancy lady, um, uh, a hand-dyed, like, uh, linen, just, like, let me, let me do some of that work for you. Uh, and then, and then show me what you are tackling um, or what you're going to tackle um, also. It'll be fun. So let me, I now am thinking back through talking about this already and what I've said and what I haven't said and what I've covered. The last thing I got in my one, two, three stitch order was the fox, which is not a new chart to probably all of you. If this is your first time seeing this chart, congratulations. I, I don't I don't believe that there's gonna be a single person. This is from Cottage Garden Samplings, unless you're like a non-stitcher and watching this. Um in which case, props to you for being a non-stitcher and watching this. Um, maybe not the best video to all the tech trouble. Okay, um, this is a series called A Year in the Woods by Cottage Garden Samplings. And just in case you're only vaguely familiar with this, they're super, super cute. Um, this, they've now released five, but they go through all the seasons. Sorry, now I, I put it down and now, I, there we go. They go through all the seasons. Um, there are three animals per season. One and two of the winter has been released, but the third one is number 12 in the whole series. And you can stitch it separately like this, or you can stitch them all in a row, like per season. So this would be in the middle, and part two would be on this side, and part 12 is on this side. That's how I'm going to stitch it. But this will be a, several months from now, because um, I don't have the fabric yet. But I ordered it also, because if all because I was missing a thread from Neuschwanstein Castle that I had to order for 123 Stitch, I ordered fabric and this chart but this chart needed additional fabric from a different store so yeah all because I needed one skein of floss maybe someone should question my judgment but I don't think it's going to be you guys so they're really cute the first one is a fox and the second one are swans Third is a jackrabbit, fourth a raccoon, the fifth is a ferret. And I, I, uh, I've never stitched anything from Cottage Garden Samplings, but I'm about to. Uh, okay, so I showed you the Silks for You PR0090 that I was doing with the ink circles. I ordered two half hanks, and I only showed you one. The other one I ordered is PR150, um, which is a very 
lovely silvery gray. This is how they come, like this. They are, are tied, um, kind of like that. So let me just wind this up real quick to show it to you. There is a very slight variation on here, and you might be able to see some of the darker and some of the lighter. That's not just the lighting that is now streaming in a little bit. Um, it is it is very slightly variegated, but that's the other. I got two half hanks, and this is the other one. And this is going to be used on my long dog sampler which is Pavan for these times uh the last video i showed you the fabric i got it's a 36 count because i wanted to try a smaller count fabric um right now it's just white but i plan on dyeing this purple i'm hoping a darker purple um kind of like what my hair looks like when it's freshly dyed, not like right now. This is not fresh. Um, but I just, I think that's going to be so lovely having this, a dark purple, and then the, this, this silvery gray, like on top of it. Uh, I think it will just be so lovely. Whew. And yes, I will video when I dye it. Uh, because several of you, several of you asked for that. I've never dyed a thing, so this is going to be another one of those um, new things where uh, maybe I make mistakes and you learn from those mistakes. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. I have gotten a couple like tips from people on how they do it, and... Um, so we'll see what happens. But again, it won't be for another couple weeks. Okay, the reason it's not going to be for another couple weeks is because I am heading out of town for like a week and a half-ish. Um, and so I have a, well, okay, I'm filming this on a Tuesday, um, but it won't post until Thursday, especially now that I'm going to have to piece together so many clips and try to make this a cohesive uh, thought. I, it, it's not going to be cohesive because my thinking is not um, cohesive. So, road trip. I'm going on this road trip and... So by the time you see this video, I will be about to leave or already gone. Um, so follow me on Instagram if you want to see what I actually am choosing to take with me. I don't know what I'm going to work on before then. Um, obviously my treasure hunt bookshelf. I am aiming to reach 37%. Before then, so I have, by the time you see this video, I'm sure I'll actually be done. But I have basically two days to finish out that percentage, which won't be a problem. But ones I think I will take. Um, since I don't want to take anything that... Um, I'm not taking my whole big DMC collection, so and I don't want to take any Hades. So I think I'm going to take... Okay, actually, I'm just going to tell you my options. Um, the Drawn Thread. The Summer Garden by the Drawn Thread. I just need self-containing flosses, basically. I will take um, Ink Circles. The Circus of Tiles. I, this is just I, I happen to know in French you don't say most letters, so I don't want to. I don't want to try. I other options is this old kit. 
I took this on my last chip. Um, it's called Peaceful Garden Path by Sunset. This one, it looks like that right now. I do love that piece. It's a, it's a peaceful piece. Again, nature and I, I, I love nature pieces, so. I guess that's not a surprise that I might take that one. Uh, what else did I pull? Oh, this is my um, gold dimensions kit that I can't there, unzip. There it goes. Woodland Enchantress. And I know there's a fall one, like a fall fairy that Ruth Sanderson also did. Um, are there ones for all seasons or is it just those two? Because I would love to also do the Autumn Fairy, but if there's one, if there's more of them that she's done uh, and you know about that, let me know because I would, I would, I would do them all. I would complete them all. But because that's a kit, I have all the stuff for it. I can take that easily. That's what it currently looks like. And I haven't worked on this one, it feels like, in a while, so. Chances are, everything that I'm showing you right now, I will probably take them all. And, because I will be gone for like 10 days and who knows what I want to work on. This one... I have, this is my oldest whip. This is the Lakeside Needlecraft um, Stitch Along Under the Sea Sal 2017. And I've, yeah, yep. And I have picked this up over the years. It, I, I didn't have the same problem as the Mystery Town one where I had to choose like this is this is just this is what it's gonna look like I just have to stitch this it's just I and I have picked it up over the years and yet I'm only on part seven I'm on part seven I'm on the section right here oh that's you can't see that this is 18 count Ada because again, I hadn't experienced other fabrics yet. Um, so there's a lot of fish. I think there's five fish and um, the mermaid here. And I do have beeswax to try with the metallic thread. My goal is to not hate working with the metallic. It's a DMC metallic and I've, I've it, You've heard me talk about it. I do not like it. But I'm going to try this beeswax. Um, I've never used wax before, so I think I just, like, slide the thread across it. Do I, like, put the thread on and hold it like that and then, like, slide it? Uh, that's what it says. Gently pull thread between thumb and waxer two times, then pull thread between thumb and finger to smooth. So, um, that's what I'm going to do, and it's, ugh. We're going to try that, so. Maybe I'll actually have something to tell you about that next time. The last possibility is another kit that I haven't started yet. It's a, a Jan Lin kit Christmas uh, Victorian Christmas bell pull. Christmas is for sharing, laughing, caring. And I have all the stuff for it, all the kit stuff, but I haven't um, started it. So there's really nothing for me to show you. Oh, I know one reason why I haven't started it is because it, it gives you the floss in this in like these bundles because it's old enough that's what they all did and then they give you one single card or they didn't give you any card and I put this in here I don't even remember now but I took one of the bundles 
and filled up this card and I wrote the numbers, but I don't have another card for this. Um, that's an easy fix, I know. I have a hole punch and I have cardstock. Um, I, I can do that. I just haven't yet, and that's what has stopped me. It does have this gold, shiny stuff, um, which is also in Woodland Enchantress. Not that I've used in there either. But those are my uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six that I will probably take all of them. Um, yeah, I looked through I looked through the rest, and I don't. I have a lot of smalls that I'm not starting until May. I have a lot of hades that I'm not taking with me. This is almost everything else. I have a couple, like, medium-sized ones that I haven't started yet. Um, partially because I can't decide which of my existing fabrics should go in it. So, anyway. Um, this has been Suki, the brown-eyed stitcher. A very long video in which she talks about cross-stitching and stories and technology difficulties and... Um, Yeah, if you've been on a live with me, one of my live Stitch With Me's, this is much more like what the lives have been like. Um, it's just been a mess, and thank you so much for sticking with me and being normal just, <laughs> just like me. Thank you for being normal like me. Thank you for helping me feel normal. Um, yeah, I don't even know how to end this because I can't, I can't, I can no, I'm no longer processing. My brain is not finding words. I love you all, and I'll be back in two weeks. Bye.